Good afternoon, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Outlook and discussion for August 1st, 2021, recorded around 3.40 p.m. Eastern Time. Not too much to talk about today, but a look at when conditions will become more favorable over the next several weeks across the tropical Atlantic and the very active peak of the season that is upcoming quite quickly here. So jumping straight into everything, taking a wide look across the tropical Atlantic this afternoon, not too much is going on. Very good news, obviously, for the 1st of August, but we turn now our attention to the main development region where we already see some tropical waves with energy moving off the coast of Africa here. This one is not really anything to kind of keep an eye on. This one especially is not really anything to kind of keep an eye on. This will be moving westward with time towards the west-northwest, but will dry out because very unfavorable conditions across here. And conditions will become a little bit more conducive for storms that are back over Africa, which we'll look at here in a moment, that will be propagating westward with time and come off here into the tropical Atlantic within the next four or five days. And that's when conditions could become a little bit more favorable for development uh, as we progress through the next few days into the next week or two. So again, in the Atlantic Basin, nothing expected, but in the tropical Pacific here, we have several systems. We have Hurricane Hilda over here, another system here, and another system here. Uh, this one not likely to develop too much. Again, this one is only at a 30% chance there. Uh, this one is at an 80-80, and then there should be another couple of areas back here that will likely go on to develop. This is all in part because we have a lot of upward moving air across the tropical Pacific right now and not a lot of upward moving air over the tropical Atlantic, and which we'll look at that here in greater detail in a moment. But the more favorable conditions will reside across the tropical Pacific for the next couple of uh, days or so, and then slowly transition into the Atlantic Basin through the next several weeks here. So this is the 850 millibar vorticity product. This is the spin in the atmosphere, about 5,000 feet off the ground. And for context here, these reds and whites, that's your high cyclonic spin at your 5,000 foot level. Again, we notice that there is some energy coming off here at the low latitudes near Africa, here near the Cabo Verde Islands. These are not expected to go on to develop uh, as they traverse westward. Again, just very unfavorable conditions setting up across here for the next couple of days or so. We notice the two tropical systems right now in the eastern Pacific Basin that we'll be watching. Again, not really anything of concern for land. These may generate just a little bit of swell activity, uh, but these should stay well away from land and not really be of any concern over the next several days or so. But turning our attention back over Africa, we notice again we have a tropical wave, uh, a big tropical wave here, and we have more tropical waves that are back off the screen here. We can kind of see there's a tropical wave here and a tropical waves that are back all the way off towards the screen here. You can't really see them uh, very well here, but we have a large amount of tropical waves back over this part of Africa. They'll be moving westward over the next several days or so. And eventually these will emerge into the Atlantic Basin where we have a active phase of the Kelvin wave that is passing over Africa now. And what this really means here, again, just for context for people who are very unfamiliar with this, this basically delineates pockets of upward and uh, downward moving air in the atmosphere. Basically, uh, you have positive velocity potential anomalies, which is the sinking air here. And you would typically associate positive with being favorable. Uh, positive in this case means that we have sinking air in the atmosphere and negative velocity potential anomalies in the blue colors. This is very indicative of, of upward moving air, more convective allowing. So we have this phase here of the Kelvin wave uh, passing over Africa. And these Kelvin waves are kind of the uh, kind of the kickstarter, if you will, for some of these tropical waves and these will amplify the waves as this passes over Africa. Again, it's typically a delayed response of about one to two days after the Kelvin wave passes through. You'll start to see that response in the atmosphere. We do have a suppressed phase that is passing through the Atlantic, but this is actually a weakening suppressed phase. And then we also have another active phase of the Kelvin wave that is currently sitting over the Eastern Pacific Basin right now. And this will be moving eastward with time into the tropical Atlantic, where we have a tropical wave that may exit Africa in the next four to five days or so and be amplified by this approaching Kelvin wave over here. Now, on the much broader scale, this is a look at the Madden-Julian oscillation. So the Kelvin wave here 
This is basically a couple of weeks of duration. These typically last about a couple of weeks. The Madden Julian oscillation lasts several months to over a year. And this is the velocity potential at 200 millibars. So again, really we're seeing right now very strongly correlated uh, upward moving air across the Eastern Pacific. Now, I do use caution with this map and I will kind of caution users on this map. This is assuming a propagating motion of the Madden Julian oscillation. So this assumes that the, the MJO is what it's called for short is a propagating wave. And what we know is that Madden Julian oscillations can sit there and, and create a standing wave, which we'll be seeing in the Atlantic, which we'll see setting up in the Atlantic within the next few weeks. But this assumes a propagating motion. Now, what we do know is that there is some truth to the propagating factor of the Madden Julian oscillation, given the fact that uh, in most of the climate models and most of the weekly and monthly climate models, we can tell that the Madden Julian oscillation is going to be shifting from the Eastern Pacific where it is today. That's why you have all those tropical cyclones out there. And now we'll be shifting and focusing over Africa and parts of the East Atlantic. And we notice here by week two, this is the forecast from August 9th through, <clears throat> excuse me, August 15th. And what we can tell is that we have, again, the upward moving air that is centered over Africa right now and over parts of uh, really the Eastern Atlantic. And now we do have this one cell here that is kind of a secondary positive velocity anomaly over parts of the far Eastern Pacific and Western parts of the Atlantic Basin. We'll see if that's able to kind of kickstart anything for the Eastern Pacific as this kind of rolls on through. The bottom line is the Atlantic Basin will be awakening very shortly uh, with activity. And we can kind of further see this here reflected in uh, the sea surface temperature anomaly map updated as of yesterday. Uh, now with the tropical Atlantic sitting at or above the long-term average by at least uh, about, uh, about a quarter to a half degree Celsius above the long-term average, the tropical Pacific in the meantime is cooling and cooling rapidly at that. Again, we noticed that the Nino 3-4 index, which is right here, uh, is rapidly cooling now where the sea surface temperatures are all unanimously uh, below, <clears throat> uh, below average by, uh, in some cases, over about a half a degree Celsius below the long-term average. And in the meantime, the tropical Atlantic is warming. The Gulf of Mexico is warming. Uh, the North Atlantic is warming. And the, and the North Atlantic warmth is pretty important because the North Atlantic warmth creates uh, the potential for very strong ridging peak season, and that forces tropical systems that are already coming off at a low latitude this year further west and potentially into the Caribbean and the islands. Uh, so, of course, if you live down there in those areas, if you live in the United States, of course, anywhere that is prone to hurricanes, you need to be preparing now and have your hurricane preparedness plans ready because I'm telling you what, guys, the time is running out very quickly uh, to prepare. The time is running out. And before you know it, you know, before you know it, we're going to have storm after storm after storm that will be firing off across the Atlantic Basin. And that's not to hype anything up. That's not to, you know, scare anybody. That's not to, you know, you know, make anyone panic. But that's just the reality. We saw this coming for many months at this point. You know, we saw this coming since really about March of this year that we potentially were going to be dealing with a very busy hurricane season. So all the signs are there for a very busy season. It's now seemingly likely that it's going to come to fruition. All the talk about the 2013, oh, the 2013 repeat, that's not happening. Here we are, and we are only uh, probably another week or so away from dealing with tropical activity. And that's now well reflected in the GFS forecast here. This is the 850 millibar vorticity map. Again, the spin in the atmosphere about 5,000 feet off the ground. What we're dealing with right now, again, just generally that we're not dealing with favorable conditions. We notice this very large tropical wave over Africa or over parts of eastern, the eastern Atlantic and the Cabo Verde Islands right now. Some of that energy is still over Western Africa here. Now, with time, this tropical wave will be moving kind of westward again. Not really seeing much development chances out of that. May get some aggregate, uh, you know, kind of aggravated vorticity bits that might spin up across this edge here. None of these will develop into any tropical activity. Uh, but then we kind of notice that we get a new wave that ends up kind of forming out here. Now, this is uh, well out here beyond about five days or so, but the GFS forecast 
has been picking up on this tropical wave for the last little while now. Got a pretty good signature to it. And it does indeed try to close that area off. Now we notice that we're still dealing with tropical cyclones and potentially even hurricanes in the eastern Pacific Basin. Now, again, some of this is probably the GFS forecast that the GFS has a bias with slowly propagating the Madden Julian oscillation. So in the GFS forecast in particular, it keeps the Madden Julian oscillation over the eastern Pacific and doesn't really translate into the Atlantic very well. And so this creates a lot of vertical shear. All that upward moving air is still over here and just generally unfavorable conditions that will be setting up here according to the GFS based on its propagation uh, bias. But we can even see here in the European run, this is the 12Z run of the Euro. Again, much of the same solution. It too generates a system out here uh, after really about uh, the next about couple of days or so. This is day five. This is day six, day seven, day eight. On day eight, we're dealing with the, what could be a tropical system. This is day nine. That's day 10. Uh, and we're dealing with systems at this point on the Euro forecast. Not really intense. And again, it's just a little too early to kind of be speculating what might happen or where these systems might go. Uh, but it is kind of a general rule of thumb. Now is the time to be prepared because it looks like that the pattern is about to be flipping here in the next couple of weeks or so. So right now, everything is quiet. And it's going to remain quiet for the next several days. I don't really suspect much of anything occurring out here beyond that time. But after the next week or so, really after we get through this week, and then in the next week, things could start to change. All right. So with that being said, I hope you all have a great rest of your afternoon and evening. Of course, I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more tomorrow.